Welcome to Blueprint of Faith. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host on this journey into the Word of God, which is also called the Word of Faith. I've been a teacher of the Word for over 30 years. I was a pastor of Abundant Grace Ministries, and now I travel the world teaching the Word of God. According to the Word, without faith, it's impossible to please God. By faith, we understand. The Bible also goes on to say that the just shall live by faith, for we walk by faith and not by sight. By faith we believe that the universe was made. We are justified by faith. Fight the good fight of faith. At this podcast, we're going to talk about what really is faith, how we get it, how do we develop it, how to use it, so that we can receive the 8,810 promises of God, 7,487 of them being promises made by God to His beloved man. Welcome to Blueprint of Faith. I'm doing something different this morning because my brother actually had told me to do this a long time ago. It's Sunday morning and I actually read, I've been reading a couple of articles concerning COVID and I actually was um, reading an article about a gentleman by the name of Dan Darling and he apparently he was on Morning Joe sometime last week. Um, he was talking about the COVID-19 vaccine vaccine and how he believed in the vaccine. And as a result of him talking about that, uh, he was fired from his position. Now, his position was that he was uh, a part of the National Religious Broadcast. And so he was uh, fired after this meeting that he had with at Morning Joe. I actually also was reading several other articles about priests and church uh, pastors that are telling their people not to take the vaccine because it has fetus inside of the ba- vaccine. It has all kinds of stuff in vaccines. And so I wanted to address this for a second because it really drove me nuts. And I know what they're trying to say, that all this conspiracy theory about Mark of the Beast, but I wanted to talk to you guys about that. But first, let me give you a background as to what, what prophecy is about. Prophecy is about these guys that God, whoever God wants to talk to through prayer, tells us that when we pray that God reveals things to us. My family, my mom and uh, when she was alive and my family, we prayed a lot. We would we would fast as a family and we would pray and go before God. And we usually went to him to find out stuff about our family, to guide our family and friends would submit prayer requests and so forth. And so we would pray concerning those things. But God, from time to time, would reveal things to us. One of those revelations that he had given my family back in the 80s, that America would become a third world country. And we were we were uh, stunned, of course, because we came from, quote unquote, a third world country, which is British Guiana. And so looking at our, our point of reference of a third world country is those countries that were in South America, parts of Africa, the West Indies and so forth. So when that prophecy came forth say, stating that America would become a third world country, it was jarring to us, n- n- uh, needless to say. So all through my life, I've been looking to see this manifestation if it was true. And I believe that it is true because we began to see some of that manifestation back in 2007, 2008 with the the uh, financial crash. And I remember a, watching one of the financial commentators at the time talking about how America has become a third world country. Quote, uh, he had said exactly what was prophesied through Ghana giving us this prophecy back in the 80s. That prophecy, when it came, we, my, my sibling went and told a pastor, uh, our pastor at the time, that uh, God had told this to us. Uh, My family, we were accused of uh, witchcraft. We were accused of all kinds of stuff based on that information. Because when when my sibling uh, told the pastor about this, he said that we, um, uh, that America would never become a third world country and that we were uh, heretics 
And needless to say, it created a tremendous amount of stress within my family. Uh, he went so far as to call my my parents pastor because my parents and uh, they went to a separate church three of my siblings two of my siblings and myself went to another church and uh, that pastor called my parents pastor and accused them of uh, being in witchcraft and all of the other things and that pastor stood up stood up for my parents because he said in my in their church um, they are part of the prayer team and that every prayer that they have, um, they have uh, been to God and uh, God answers their prayers. And so he doesn't know what he was talking about. And that if God showed us, showed my parents that information, that means that it is true because he testify of who they were and they're standing in the church. And so based on that, it caused my other sibling tremendous pain where it, it, it hurt that was so deep, it affected their lives for, um, even of today. And so I wanted to address this situation about the church. And so prophecy, I wanted to go back in. I wanted to give you that background of some of the things that happened with my family concerning prophecy. And so prophecy to me is that God has given to us insights into, uh, you have prophecies that are dealing with, um, you know, your current situation or a situation with, with a, with a uh, person. And then there are prophecies about nations that God talks about. In the Bible, you look at the Bible, you'll see about nations uh, through Daniel and, and all the other prophets that line up. Jesus talks about uh, uh, prophecy with nation, Paul, John, all of these guys talk about prophecies concerning nature, I mean, not nature, uh, concerning uh, cities, concerning towns, concerning nations, and so forth. So as I began to look at this thing, prophecy is about God giving you insight. And so how he does that it based on how he he does it he picks it and so the scripture in in second corinthians uh, 12 13 states i know a man in christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven whether it was in the body or out of the body i do not know but god knows and so the reason why i i brought brought you to that scripture is uh, we see that this can be the same for the prophets of old and of the uh the men and women today that are true prophets. I've met quite a few of them. So sometimes they prophesy in a service. Sometimes it's when they're in their, their private time. And so in Daniel's private time, God brought him to our timeline. And so he brought him through whether in the spirit or, or the body. So it tells us that that's how he brought him. So these prophets will come into our timeline and they see the decisions that we have made as a collective. And they then would go back into their time and begin to explain what they saw. And so you have many of those guys talk about coming into our timeline and they saw the sky look as mushroom in the sky, red in the skies and so forth. So you and I know that when uh, a mushroom is seen in the sky, we know today exactly what he, that prophet is talking about. That's nuclear war. Uh, so um, we, in his time, he couldn't understand what nuclear war was about but he understood what a mushroom looked like. And so he knows what a mushroom. And so he took that language of his limited understanding at the time, and he began to pen what he saw. And so he described mushroom. He described that uh, John, when he came into our timeline uh, on, the, on the island of Patmos, he saw us in how we behave. And as a collective, the decisions that were made and the outcome of those decisions one of the things that he talked about is he talks about the mark of the beast. He talks about the leaders and the nations of, of that time that uh, John saw that vision. And so now the question becomes, what timeline is it? It is in our timeline, guys. And so uh, if you study, God said he is speaking to us in these last days 
by by the ages. And so if you study the ages, then you will have an understanding of what's going on. And so uh, as to the ages, you and I are roughly, um, is 20, it is calculated so that 2075 is where we have our 6,000 years. And so it is believed that, that it was around that time that Jesus would be coming back. But you have to then uh, calculate seven years out of that, because there were seven years that Lucifer and um, the Antichrist has his reign. So seven years out of that brings you to, um, you know, where it does. And so, um, but Jesus makes a statement, says, I don't know when I'm, when the time or hour, but I can give you some signals and some signs and so forth. And he gives us those signs in uh, when he spoke to the d disciples, when they asked him what is the the end of the age looks like. And so he begins, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. And so then we have to go back and look at what happened in the time of Noah. But uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about this mark of the beast and the vaccines that these priests and preachers are fighting against. Do not listen to these men. They are absolutely, it's crazy. It's absolutely nuts because the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. If your faith is not strong enough, you will die. Your faith has to be strong enough in order to hold up against this, this, this disease because God has promised us in the word. He says, no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. Now you can interpret that several ways. You could mean your household as an individual. It also your dwelling means your body because we are spirits and our body is the temple. So in interpret God has given us those promise promises but it's our faith in those promises that keeps us healthy it is our faith the just shall live by faith don't let these guys cause you to die if your faith is not there it, these men are ridiculous now let's talk about this mark of the beast uh, situation. When the um, when he came into uh, when John came into our timeline and he saw what we did as a collective, we instituted the mark of the beast because the the antichrist was here and he instituted that. Now it tells us the location that these things will be. This uh, it says that the location that we have to the p people at that time would have to take this mark is in two locations. Now, me as a, uh, as a uh, person, I would be able to argue, I believe we would be able to argue with God, if um, the location that we took this vaccine is different from what is in his word, because he said his word is truth. And so the location that he said these vaccines, that the mark of the beast would be, is in your hands and in your forehead. And until they come and tell you that you have to put the vaccine in your hand and your forehead, I believe that you are in good standing. Do not let these men cause you and your family to die for no reason. The just shall live by faith. If your faith is not strong enough to withstand this disease, do not trust these men because it is going to be a detrimental thing to you and your family. They are dying all over the place. Pastors, these men and, and women within their, their parishioners, their, their, their members, they're all dying. And so if they're dying, uh, something is up. So don't be afraid to take the vaccine because you could still argue before God that it's, it, it, I, I took it in my, in my shoulders, in, in my upper arm. It didn't say it's, it was very specific. God does not lie. The Bible says he is not a man that he should lie. And what the prophet saw when he came into our time, when John saw, was that it was on the hand and the forehead. And he reported that. He came back and he wrote it down. Do not let these men kill you and your family. The just shall live by faith. If your faith is not strong enough, you will die. I mean, this is ridiculous stuff. The Bible tells us, 
the just shall live by faith. If you go and take a look at the people that obtained their healing in the scriptures, they all obtained it by faith. Do not let these men kill you and your family. Let them not take the shot. How can the church tell these people to do what they're doing and they're dying all over the place? Do not let these people do that. Jesus makes a statement in, in, in the Bible. He says, Where, shall I find faith when I come? Now, we need to understand what does that mean? Because the Bible just, I just told you that the Bible says the just shall live by faith. So my question is, and when Jesus makes that statement, where, where, where is the church? Where are the people that are living by faith? And the Bible tells that the church will have a great falling away. And Jesus makes a statement, shall I find faith when I come? Don't let these men do this to you and your family. Stop this madness and save yourself and your family. Thank you for coming to Blueprint of Faith. And remember, every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So be not weary, but imitate them who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. Again, thank you for coming by. Please subscribe. And if you can, support us financially. We deeply appreciate it. You can do this by hitting the heart button. Until next time, invite your family, friends, neighbors, church study group, and even people you don't like. You can hear us on Buzzsprout, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Overcast, and many more.